everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to leave no dye behind. Please excuse the really funny angle. Um, I currently have some Bare Knit Picks Hawthorne in some leftover, I think pretty high acid bath that I've done from some videos today, and we are going to add some leftover dyes. I've got some leftovers from mixing some new dye stocks, and what on earth color is that one? Nice little brown. And we're just sort of going to add on a bunch of different colors here. This one. <laughs> going to change the character. Here's some purple pop, which is like a fluorescent, I think what's left in here is this fluorescent pink. Uh, this was not hot yet. I just started heating this right now. Um, but before I go to the next color, which is sort of rinsing out my Dharma Deep Purple container, I'm going to go ahead and let this sit and let these colors sort of absorb <laughs> to the yarn a bit. Okay, this colorway is actually really, really fantastic and part of me is sad to layer on top of it. However, I'm also at the same time excited to turn up the volume a bit on this colorway. But let's, and I should have added a zip tie, but let's flip this over just in case but yeah because we just have one skein of yarn in here we actually can get it spread out really really nicely um oof, i really like these tones i seriously hope that i don't regret adding on this deep purple on top but let's do just a hint Okay, this is actually really dilute. Um, I know we're getting this sort of like streaky thing going on, but you know that that is a technique that I love. Just sort of going across. All right, I could be real down with this. And I am going to, I mean, I'm not even waiting because I know that this is striking quickly. But we are going to flip this and do the same thing again. And then we're gonna move it around. And just add more of this Dharma Deep Purple sort of layered on top of everything else. Um, the squeeze bottle that I'm using is one of the Dharma squeeze bottles and this is the one that I used for <laughs> my dye stock and you can see I'm just it's got that nice little stream of color and since this is a bottle end um, everything that's left, whoo that's hot, is pretty it's pretty dilute. Um, all right, and some of those streaks are going to stick behind, some might go away, but we're just going to see about breaking up some of these sections of color. Oof, I really, really like what this is doing. Okay, there's a little bit left. I'm going to let this sit for a minute or two before we come back. Um, to move it around one more time and add I guess, the rest of the color. But I guess even if I shift the pan right now, you can see a lot of those streaks are sort of sticking around. Okay, this yarn is so much fun. I do want to sort of take a closer look, see if there's any segments, especially maybe around the ties that I think could use a little more color and sort of try to expose that as I go through with this last bit of color. 
but I think that what we are creating is just this gorgeous sort of almost antique rose feeling, um, you know, a pastel. This is not particularly bright, but it is sort of well covered and has some great dimension. I think that even with like all of the color that there is on this, this is a the type of yarn that would work really, really well um, with a complex stitch pattern. All right, and that is the last of our leftover dye from today. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this sit on the heat for, I don't know, a good five, 10 minutes, um, and then we'll come back. You can appreciate the beauty of this yarn. It really does feel like rose petals. Um, it's fairly muted, but there's multiple purple and pink tones in here, and I love it. I'm now turning off the heat. I believe that the water is clear. Yeah, the pan is clear. There's not anything there. But because of my dyeing schedule today, I will leave this in the pan to cool off. And once it's cool, we'll go wash the yarn. I feel like purple is the average color for just a lot of dyes out there. Um, with food coloring, when you mix them together, and I think it's because like brown food colorings end up reading purple anyway. But a lot of my leftover dyes end up being sort of purplish, and I don't think that that is just because my favorite color is purple. But we've got this beautiful pastel yarn, and I just added some clear dish soap, so that way we can see if we have any color bleeding. But we have some really great depth and dimension in here because of the way we layered on the color. It's not really speckled, um, but it is soft and variegated and well, I think could turn into something wonderful. But I am not detecting any bleeding, so we are going to rinse out the soap, put this through my Unisoft pretty wire, and then hang it up to dry. Yarns that I dye with leftover dyes can be vibrant and saturated, they can be pastel, they can be semi-solid or variegated. And today we have this really variegated soft colorway. We have elements of pastel pink and lavender, a little bit almost of some brownish purples, and then some medium purples and pinks randomly throughout the skein. There is a lot of dimension in the color of this yarn because of the way that we applied it. Um, and it's not quite speckles, but you do see these small tonal differences over the whole skein. There are many reasons why I don't like to leave any dye behind. I don't like to dump dye down the drain if I can help it. I like to use what I have to just be resourceful. Um, and I also think that it is just a ton of fun. But I do want to acknowledge the place of privilege that I come from in that I have access to so much bare yarn that I can, quote, sacrifice some skeins for these experiments um, where I'm just throwing things together, not sure what direction it's going to go. And, you know, I know it's a luxury because I have this YouTube channel and I have a shop and so I have access to you know dozens of skeins of bare yarn at any given time whereas back in the day all of the yarn when I started out all of the yarn dyeing I did was on mini skeins and I would let 100 gram skein of bare yarn stretch as far as I could as I got a feel for different techniques and things I liked to do so while I encourage and I love my leave no die behind mentality, I do want to acknowledge that, you know, when I say, oh, just grab another skein of yarn and throw dye at it and see what happens, that I'm aware that that's something that not necessarily everyone can do if you, you know, you have a more limited stash or you budget, maybe you can play with one skein every so often. And so I just want to put that out there that I am conscious of that. All of that aside, I hope that these Leave No Die Behind videos show you that you can create really stunning, beautiful colorways with just tiny amounts of leftover dye that you might have 
on the insides of cups, from making dye stocks even. And that is what created this today. And these also sort of remind me that sometimes it's worth using a little bit of restraint when dyeing colors. I love deep, bold, saturated colors, but sometimes I get a pastel one like this and oh, it just makes me so excited. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, comment, let me know what you think. Make sure you never miss a new video. If I haven't convinced you to start dyeing your own yarn, and instead you'd like to play with some of the yarn that I've dyed, you should go and check out the Chemnitz Creations Etsy store. My shop is full of yarn that's been featured here on the YouTube channel, and it's also, not only can you get some really beautiful yarn, but it's a great way to support the content and help me buy more berry yarn so I can keep creating videos like these. You can find a link in the video description and iCard. Thank you so, so much for watching, everyone.